Hey guys, it's Brian, and today on Firebird Friday, we're gonna hook up some external gauges to our 67 Firebird, because without knowing how hot our engine's running and what our oil pressure is, I'm running a little scared firing this engine up and taking it for a trip around the block without knowing that information. Now, I did go cheap, but you know what they say, and I think you'll figure out why. Let me show you how I did this, how I set it up, if you wanna do it too. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this uh, gauge set. Let's go look. So on my 67 Firebird, I don't have the dash uh, gauges that give me water actual temp and they don't tell you oil pressure. They're just gonna have the idiot light that comes on when it gets too hot or the fluid gets too low. And I just don't like that. I like having information. I'm an information kind of guy. So I need more information. So I thought I would uh, install one of those auxiliary three gauge deals that you can buy at uh, one of those um, offshore places. And what the hell? <laughs> the, uh, that just fell off. Nice. Okay, well, I'll clean this up and uh, see if we can get some gauges for down there. So I uh, ran onto my uh, local parts store and I found this triple gauge set. Thought, uh, why not? The price was good, it was 20 bucks. So let's open this bad boy up and see what we have inside and see if we can't make it work in our Firebird. So here's what you get in your kit. You get uh, the gauges and it looks like the gauge for the um, water temp. Yep, temperature. Gauge is already attached with uh, that, and uh, looks like you can attach the uh, for the oil pressure and then for the volts. Um, did come with this big one right here. I add that to our little collection. Got some adapters. We have some clear tubing that's for oil pressure. You get some light bulbs to uh, put into uh, here, it looks like, to uh, give yourself some illumination at night. Uh, looks like a couple screws to attach the uh, top plate to the car. And some other various washers probably for uh, back here to get all those squared away. And of course you get the world famous uh, instructions, front and back sheets. So uh, I say we get to going. Uh, first things first, I guess. Let's see the water temp. So on our 350 motor that we have in our Firebird, the water temp sensor lays right here by uh, piston number one, cylinder number one. And we're gonna take that out. We're gonna run our line to there for our water temp. And then back here by the distributor, that there is your oil pressure. We'll take that out and we'll screw in the uh, oil pressure sender there. And obviously those wires are gonna come in through the firewall and then down. But let's go ahead and take those two plugs off and uh, make sure that the fittings work right. Guess I should have mentioned to make sure to uh, drain your uh, radiator fluid <laughs> before pulling this. <laughs> so it's a good thing we're still working on the car and this has already been done. And only a little bit came out. So uh, here's what we're looking at. So let's go to our uh, kit and let's find the right size adapter to make sure we can even do this. And now this here is our oil pressure sender that was in there. So uh, let's go match up now. So when it comes to our oil pr pressure, that little nipple right there, the best one I can come up with was this one. And that looks to be about the right size threads uh, in diameter for those two right there. And then when it comes to this big daddy, this is the line that comes with, and as you can see, it's not quite, but if we stick this adapter on, and obviously that's going to screw into that, then we have what looks like to be a match. Okay, so to attach the tubing, you have to put them together, put the two ends together, and then tighten them down, and then that uh, tubing will come out. So now we'll feed this to the firewall, and we'll get to hooking all this up. Okay guys, so lucky for me in the Firebird, there were two screws 
that hold in the bracket for the uh, ashtray. So I was able just to, I pulled the three gauges out, and it's pretty simple. It's just um, on the back side, you pull those two nuts, and there's that little bracket that kind of holds into place. You take all three out, and I just went in and just unmove, remove the screws that hold the ashtray liner in, or the holder, and then I just re-screwed it in, and now it's in pretty tight. So then the gauge out now is our uh, water pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and feed that line through the firewall where there's a hole opening and we'll get it squared in and then we'll run the line for the oil pressure and we'll screw that in so uh, let's grab this and uh let's feed it through so probably the hardest spot is trying to find a hole that's already in your firewall that uh you can fit everything through and lucky for me if i can get in here and show you guys right in there, let's see here, right there you can kind of see the uh, sender, there's a big huge, it's a, about a two inch hole, I'm going to be able to run both sending units uh, through that one hole that'll connect to the engine, so let's push that through and we'll get on the other side and pull it up and tap it into the uh, oil pressure, run through the uh, water. Alright, so find it on the firewall where it comes through. And it's over on this side over here. Let's see here. Take my hand. Let's see if I can grab a hold of it. Oh, there it is right there. Got it. There she is. Now we're just going to pull it through a little bit until we can get it to our uh, water temp area. Okay, so we are in line now with our water temp gauge. And we're just going to find that hole. Stick it in, start it by hand. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get it hand tight and then I'm gonna put a wrench on it and just tighten it up and see how we're doing there. Well, discovered something in our process. This part here is the correct um, size and thread to go down to the block. However, um, nothing secures it. So this here, the probe just moves in and out. This is in place and tight, but the, there's too much movement here. So I was looking at the original, and um, yeah, so these threads here do match those, but you can see it's just a different type design. Well, the kit includes this adapter. The problem is, so this one screws in there like we talked about before, but this does not screw into the opening by cylinder number one. Where it does screw in is over here. And this is an Edelbrock manifold. Right there, we did have a, uh, a cap on it. But I pulled the cap, and sure enough, this will screw into there. So we're going to move our line and go around this way into here, and we'll put the old sensor back into there just to keep it watertight, and I'll put some thread lock on this bad boy here, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, get back and go into town. So uh, let's do that real quick. All right, and with that, she is tight, and that cable just runs back in and around, up against the firewall, and then back to our hole over there, and the firewall into our gauge. So the next one to put in is gonna be the uh, oil pressure, and I think we're gonna pull up the uh, distributor since it's not down yet, and we'll get that one installed. Well, now it's time to work on this thing, and um, this little plastic hose does not seem uh, like it's gonna work, but, uh, we're going to get it and put it uh, right there in that hole where the old oil sender was. And then we'll feed this through and then we'll hook it up to the gauge. So I uh, guess we should do that right now. Great. All right, so thank goodness for crow's feet. I was able to get down in there and get this attached. So now I can run this through the firewall and uh, to the gauge. So uh, let's have fun doing that. Yeah, not real happy 
with how unflexible this hose is. But I did get it through the firewall. Let's go in and see what it looks like inside. Okay, I got both gauges in. Now I'm not going to hook up the uh, alternator one just now, the battery one. But uh, those are my two important ones for now. I want to see how they do. I'm not thrilled with uh, the quality of uh, that oil pressure line. And I wasn't real happy to have to put the water temp into the uh, top of the intake instead of the side of the block. So, um, yeah, I guess that is what it is. So then, all that's left to do is take these little brackets and they go in behind and they screw in to keep everything lined up. So give me a few more minutes and I'll get that done and we'll take a look at the back side if we can. We got all three gauges in and so the water temp gauge and the oil pressure gauge is working. Uh, we did not hook up the volt gauge. We figured for now that'd be fine. But they are installed and just kind of give you an idea of what it looks like on the back side here if I can. It's a pretty simple... If I can even get back there to show you. Yeah, pretty dark in there. But, um... Well, guys, um... I tell you what, we got it installed, everything's hooked up right, but I'm just not a big fan of how this went in. I'll probably keep it for a little bit, but I'm going to switch it out for something a little bit better. So, um, yeah, it looks pretty for now, but I don't think it's going to work out. So, I'm giving it a thumbs down on this uh, kit. Let me see if I can find another one. Alright guys, see you next Friday.